There are games to be played and cheap gaming laptops to play them with, including this Dell G15 with just a 12th gen Core i5 and lowly RTX 3050. It's available on Dell's website for $750. It's not the cheapest RTX 3050 notebook on the market, so how does it rate overall? Let's find out. Slap Tech. This, then, is the Dell G15 in 2022. This particular model comes with Intel's 12th Gen Core i5-12500H that has four hyper-threaded P cores, eight single-threaded E cores, has eight gigs of DDR5 4800 memory. This laptop was ordered with an extra eight gig stick on the side because f that. The link for this crucial stick o ram should be in the description and the price that I quoted earlier includes this extra memory. 256 gigs is there to store games on, welcome to the bottom tier of gaming laptops, take a name, sit down and shut up, please. The 1080p non-touch matte IPS display has good potential in 120Hz, I'll explain how it stacks up to other 120Hz screens I've used in the recent past. To power it all is a 56 watt hour battery which is about right for this tier of laptop. It's not impressive, but also not disappointing. Larger batteries are available in higher trims. And the weight is heavy. That's all that needs to be known. The included AC adapter pulls 180 watts at the most out of the wall, which should be well more than necessary for this RTX 3050 notebook. 8 feet is as far as it'll stretch out of the box, and the from the wall cord is not proprietary and can be swapped out for a longer one, increasing the maximum range to 11 feet. The battery life is pretty terrible out of the box at about two hours of internet work use. Dell doesn't provide any extra software assistance like Acer does in the Nitro 5. By setting the screen to 60 Hz, lowering the brightness, turning off Bluetooth, setting the power mode to best power efficiency, Nvidia control panel to integrated graphics, and clicking on every single one of Windows 11's built-in carbon emissions sermons to appease the god kings of ESG, I got 2.5 hours of internet work use. Hooray! At least the build quality doesn't disappoint much. The worst part is obviously this grilled area above the keyboard which will bend and then probably crack if given enough pressure. The keyboard exhibits less flex but still bends a little and the palm rest is the sturdiest part of the notebook. At least the plastic feels decent and not inexpensive and while the back of the monitor looks good, the overall rigidity of the screen is a bit lacking and tends to wobble. I think it's because they wanted to save materials and weight to keep the whole package under 6 pounds. The hinges are strong, but the screen is just... bleh. At least the pyramid on the back with the little ridges that contrast with the rest of the top looks classy, but that's where my praise of the aesthetic stops. The styling of the Dell G15 brings back all of the good trends from the 1980s. Unfortunately, there are no good styling trends from the 1980s. There are sharp edges on every corner of this notebook. If it was thrown at someone, it would cut through the skin and go straight for the soul. Only a ginger wouldn't die, but they would still be gravely injured. Anyone who actually likes this style more than any other gaming notebook is more evidence that this country's culture is going in the wrong direction, and may God have mercy on our souls. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right there are two USB 3.0 type A ports and an exhaust. On the left is the other exhaust, gigabit LAN, the headset in, and the battery indicator light. On the back is a cleverly disguised USB-C port with a display port label on it, because what the hell else can be done with it? A third USB 3.0 type A port, HDMI, the power hole, and two more exhausts. If you spend more money and get the RTX 3060 model, that USB-C port magically transforms into Thunderbolt 4 because of course it does. And there's no SD card reader, so shop wisely for that USB-C dock if an SD card reader is a necessity. The bottom cover is held in place by eight screws. The four inside screws are captive and don't come out, and the four outside screws should be removed. There's a first time for everything, and the initial removal will be a stubborn affair. Once the bottom cover is finally off, we can see that all of the heat piping is tucked away into the rear compartment. Both the CPU and GPU are kept there, away from the rest of the notebook, and so is the heat they produce. The two memory slots sit next to each other, and the NVMe SSD is apparently not full-sized. Fear not, there are stamped labels for where to screw in a full-sized NVMe SSD. 
And on the other side of the motherboard are the same stamped labels, but no second PCIe slot. What I gather from forums is there is no second PCIe slot on the Dell G15 in any of the trims. Thanks, Dell. I love you too. You dick. Enough of that nonsense, let's dive into the keyboard. On the whole, it's a good one. Not a lot to complain about, this is definitely an evolution from the previous generation G notebooks, although only a small step forward. The keyboard is a little clicky and noisy, but the gap I mentioned in the previous model between the letter keys and numpad has been ironed out. It's good to see the Dell's G series still comes with a full-size desktop style numpad. Home and end are secondary functions of F11 and 12, which I'm not mad about because the function lock is on the keyboard itself. The keys don't melt under my fingertips and still take a bit more force to actuate than, say, an Acer or HP product. If I missed any strokes, I could feel that I didn't press the key down all the way, so it was mostly my fault, but also the fault of the stubborn keys. Rawr. The orange backlight is certainly different, but not overwhelming. There are two levels of brightness, and the difference between the two is negligible. The touchpad at least tracks well, the acceleration is predictable so I'm able to hit corner icons without overshooting them at all. Gestures work fine, there are no physical keys, and the pseudo buttons on the bottom are a little tough, just like the keyboard. Thus, using right click is especially frustrating. What's not frustrating is the display. I was concerned that this 120Hz screen would reflect the quality of the Acer or Lenovo notebooks I've reviewed within the last year, but no, this panel is actually pretty good. It gets more than comfortably bright, dim enough for a pitch black room, and the colors are balanced so reds don't pop. The white balance is very neutral, maybe a tick of blue if anything, and if I had to guess the nits, I'd say 300, not the 250 that's on Dell's website. It's not a color accurate display, and while gradients aren't perfect, they are more than satisfactory. The ghosting and response times are also above par. This is the gold standard budget gaming laptop screen, and where all of the extra money goes. The speakers aren't half bad either. While not impressive, they won't let you down. The EQ is perfectly balanced, so loud sound effects in games won't make other noises more quiet, and the mids and highs don't outweigh one another. The bass is kind of dull, but that's okay. The bass in Calm Like a Bomb by Rage for the Machine is present and accounted for, and the deep bass in The Package by A Perfect Circle is audible, though rather weak. Heavy guitar parts hit the right spot without hard limiting, and while the overall volume isn't fantastic, they will fill a room. For playing games or watching movies, these speakers are a-okay. This is a test of the webcam on the Dell G15, 720p, the picture is especially grainy, and colors are very washed out. I swear I'm not this much of a ghost in real life. And this is a test of the webcam in poor lighting. I also have my super loud AC unit on in the background. Uh, on other laptop webcams, I've seen that the noise cancellation actually cuts out my AC unit entirely, the Dell G15 does not, but also on some other laptop webcams, this side of my face would be completely dark, so the color compensation is not half bad, and that concludes the test of the webcam. There's nothing to worry about as far as system performance is concerned either. Ignore the fact that the OEM SSD benchmarks terribly in write speeds, I don't believe those numbers for a second. Aside from that, the G15 isn't afraid to throw 75 watts at the Core i5 CPU, letting it stretch its legs for multi-core tasks. The battery life might be terrible, but at least there's virtually no difference between battery and AC performance unless you're benchmarking, video editing, or gaming. Three things that definitely shouldn't be done on battery power anyway. This meager Core i5 already benchmarks higher than the 10th gen Core i7 in the MSI GE66, the notebook that I use to edit 4K video on. 
And a 12th gen Core i7 is even faster than this? Why? The only tasks that will seem faster are benchmarks, code compiling, or video rendering. If the most intensive things a laptop does are games and Excel, the 12th gen i5 will be more than adequate. On to gaming. Welcome to the lowest of the low of RTX graphics cards. You've probably already seen the benchmarks, read all the articles, and know that this is a dog of a GPU compared to, say, the RTX 3060. But actually, this slouch of a 3D number cruncher is pretty damn good in its own right, especially when using NVIDIA DLSS. Setting DLSS to ultra performance dramatically increases frame rates and makes it possible to employ high detail settings or higher, depending on the game. Doom Eternal will still make you reduce the textures to within the legal limit of the 4 gigs of VRAM, but most modern games will happily let you sit at the highest detail settings, granted of course that the overdramatic but not entirely overbearing DLSS filter is on. Something unique to the Dell G15 is how the high refresh rate of the panel works. It seems that games will default to 60Hz, according to MSI Afterburner, and won't venture above that while in full screen. Only windowless full screen mode allows the FPS to top 60, and it still doesn't look higher than 60. Even though that's the case, what I said before about ghosting still applies, which is that ghosting is still reduced compared to other high refresh rate panels on budget gaming laptops. Gaming on battery power is a horrendous affair, so don't do it. Games will run at 30 frames a second at the most and randomly dip to unplayable frame rates when you least expect them to. And the heat is never a real issue, though it does get very warm. Most of the hotness really is relegated to the color that rests underneath the screen and the decorative grating above the keyboard. If gaming on the lap, the weight and heat will motivate in equal measure to invest in a stool or similar type of furniture. For the bottom line, why would you buy a Dell G15 over the Acer Nitro 5? The speakers and the screen are good enough reasons in themselves, but the abysmal battery life makes me want to at least try out the Ryzen 5 version of the G15 to see if that helps. I would gladly sacrifice a little bit of performance for an extra hour and a half of emancipation from the wall. Something to note is that at the time of this review, I still have the Dell Latitude 5480, my previous review victim. I found this little 14-inch laptop to be super convenient and something I would still love to have around for its excellent battery life and small form factor. If I was told I could only keep one, I would go for the Dell G15, then sell it on eBay so I could buy a Dell Latitude 5480, a 1TB NVMe SSD to go with it, and two Roombas. To start my next YouTube video enterprise, Roomba Jousting. I haven't looked it up yet, but I'm 32% sure that it hasn't already been tried. And could the Dell G15 replace my MSI GE66 as my daily driver? No, and that's because of the single PCIe slot for storage, no SD card reader, and pathetically small battery life. Next. In conclusion, students get two thumbs down thanks to the battery life. It's that awful. If the AMD version gets decent battery life, then it would get one thumbs up because it's still heavy. Casual gamers can go for this. It has more power than you really need and has excellent peripherals. As long as it's left plugged in, there won't be any issues. So if a mobile lifestyle is king, leave it behind. Competitive gamers can stay away, even if on a budget. The fake high refresh rate panel really is a bummer and won't help in Twitch gameplay scenarios. What a pity. Home users can ignore this one for the orange keyboard and terrible styling. I bet you thought I was going to say it's because of the piss-poor battery life and wait, well, those two, but the G15 doesn't blend into a room the way the HP Envy or Asus Zenbook does. No, this Dell ties the decor together as well as Uncle Gavin segues out of a conversation about taking away Grandpa's car keys by bringing up the time he ran over the beloved family cat while high on a cocktail of cocaine and Ambien. Lucky for the cat, he was only piloting a Segway, but unfortunately for the neighborhood, he was piloting the Segway bottomless while singing Let's Go Brandon to the tune of Song 2 by Blur. It didn't work very well, just like how his dick doesn't work very well. Thank God he's childless. This has been a review of the Dell G15 here on Slap Tech. Stall, 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 click the like button. Stall, 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 leave a comment. Stall, stall, stall. Anyone gonna call me out for not having a new background track on this review when I said in the last one that I would? No? Nobody cares? That's fine. I don't either. 
Thanks for watching and you guys, have a good night.